All right, so this is going to be a bit of a different one tonight. Uh, going to be playing a old video here. Uh, I watched it about a year ago uh, when I was looking into all this kind of stuff, uh, and I found this uh, this guy named Yuri. Um, he's got a last name, but uh, if I pronounce it, I will fuck it up. So, I'm not even going to try. Uh, I'll put it in the description, so if you're fluent, you can read it and uh, work it out. Also, this uh, news guy who's doing the interview, he uh, does uh, <laughs> he does mention it, so uh, you could uh, take it from there. Now, uh, this just popped up in my feed today, and I thought, you know, this is perfect for the times that we're in at the moment. It, uh, it describes exactly what's going on, and it's, uh, I mean... It's worrying and scary, but uh, at the same time, it's like uh, it's useful that we have this information to to look back on. Um, I'll let this uh, guy do the intro, just so you get a bit of backstory to this guy. Um, he misses out a few things, which I'll I'll fill in just from what I remember last year. And uh, yeah, say no more. Mr. Besmianov was born in 1939 in a suburb of Moscow. He was the son of a high-ranking Soviet Army officer. He was educated in the elite schools inside the Soviet Union and became an expert in Indian culture and Indian languages. He had an outstanding career with Novosti, which was the, and still is, I should say, the press arm or the press agency of the Soviet Union. It turns out that this is also a front for the KGB. He escaped to the West in 1970 after becoming totally disgusted with the Soviet system, and he did this at great risk to his life. He certainly is one of the world's outstanding experts on the subject of Soviet propaganda and disinformation and active measures. Wow. You... So what an intro. What a intro right there. That's uh, <laughs> quite a rap sheet. Uh, from my research last year, uh, what happened in the story of him uh, escaping and uh, becoming a defector, uh, he was in India. Uh, he fell in love with a uh, nice lady there, I assume, and uh, <laughs> after a while, uh, he realized what he was doing was wrong. He then found uh, some contacts within the Canadian ministry, who then uh, managed to uh, get him out, uh, to which he then provided information back to him. Uh, it's quite a story, quite an ordeal. I uh, recommend you go searching for this guy's story of how he escaped. It's pretty phenomenal. Um, basically, he had to dress up as a hippie to get uh, out of the Indian border, which uh, was very much being watched by the Soviet uh, Union at the time, especially the KGB, which is who he was working for. So, Snuck out of the country dressed as a hippie and um, went and gave information to Canada while he was living in Canada. He went back and forth to the States giving talks like these. Um, and yeah, very impressive. He's got a lot of lectures on YouTube. I definitely recommend checking those out. Uh, and you're probably thinking, you know, he's talking about America. What's this relevant to us here in Australia? Uh, just listen and uh, it'll become very blatantly obvious. Uh, why it's relevant to us because uh, it didn't just stop in America. So uh, without uh, any more yup yup, let's uh, <laughs> let's cut right into it and uh, see what he has to say. Risk to his life. He certainly is one of the world's outstanding experts on the subject of Soviet propaganda and disinformation and active measures. Well, you spoke several times before about ideological subversion. That is a phrase that. Uh, I'm afraid some Americans don't fully understand. When uh, the Soviets use the phrase ideological subversion, what do they mean by it? Ideological subversion is, is the slow process which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, активные мероприятия in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interests of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that so he's giving this talk uh, back in 1984, 
So it might as well be 20, 40 years ago, you know? 40 years has gone since he gave this speech. And he's talking about a 20-year segment. And this time he's talking about it already existing in America. So if we actually extrapolate how, how long he's talking about here, given today's time, that's about 60 years have passed with this happening, or allegedly happening, I should say. Quite a long time, and uh, what he's about to talk about is uh, <clears throat> going to make a lot of people stand on their toes. So uh, here we go. Years, because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being... If you doubt this in any way, I suggest you Google someone named Brett Weinstein and Evergreen College. I think it was 2018, don't quote me on the year, but uh, give that an old type into the YouTube or the Google and uh, have a read or watch of uh, what went down there. And uh, it's the exact thing that Yuri is describing. Very crazy. Challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Uh, for the last 25 years. Actually, Again, he's saying this 40 years ago. So where the fuck is it at now? Overfulfilled because uh, demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would, would even dream of such a tremendous success. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. When a military boot crashes his balls, then he will understand, but not before that. That's the tragic of the situation of demoralization. The next stage is destabilization. This time, subverter does not care about your ideas and the patterns of your consumption. Whether you eat junk food and get fat and flabby, it doesn't matter anymore. This time, and it takes only from two to five years to destabilize a nation, uh, it's, what, what matters is essentials. Economy, foreign relations, defense systems. Uh, and you can see it quite clearly that in some areas, uh, in such sensitive areas as, as uh, defense, an economy, uh, the uh, influence of Marxist-Leninist ideas in the United States is absolutely fantastic. I, I could never believe it 14 years ago when I landed uh, in this part of the world that the process will go that fast. Uh, the next stage, of course, is crisis. It, it, it may take only up to six weeks to, to bring a country to the verge of crisis. You can see it in, in Central America now. And after crisis, with a violent change of, of power, structure, and economy, you have so-called the period of normalization. It may last indefinitely. Normalization is a cynical expression borrowed from Soviet propaganda. When the Soviet tanks moved into Czechoslovakia in 68, Comrade Brezhnev said, now the situation in brotherly Czechoslovakia is normalized. This is what will happen in the United States if you allow all these schmucks to bring the country to crisis to promise people all kind of goodies and the paradise on earth, uh, to, to destabilize your uh, economy, to eliminate the principle of free market competition, and to put a big brother government in Washington, D.C., with the benevolent dictators like Walter Mondale, who will promise... So, right here, um, he's obviously... You can uh, put your own name in, your own fill in the blank uh, for that one. It's, uh, yeah, whichever people in government are running now. Lots of things. Never mind whether the promises are fulfillable or not. Your leftists, 
in, in United States, all these professors and all these beautiful civil rights defenders, they are instrumental in the process of the, of the uh, uh, subversion only to destabilize the nation. When their job is completed, they are, non, they are not needed anymore. They know too much. Some of them, when, when they get disillusioned, when they see that Marxist-Lenin has come to power, they, obviously they get offended. They think that they will come to power. That will never happen, of course. They will be lined up against the wall and shot. But they may turn into the most bitter enemies of Marxist-Leninists when they come to power. And that's what happened in Nicaragua. You remember most of these uh, former Marxist-Leninists were either put to prison or one of them split, and now he's working against Sandinistas. It happened in, in uh, uh, Grenada when Maurice Bishop was, he was already a Marxist. He was executed by, by a new Marxist who was more Marxist than this Marxist. Same happened in Afghanistan when uh, first there was Taraki, he was killed by Amin, then Amin was killed by Babrak Karmal with the help of KGB. Same happened in, in Bangladesh when Mujibur Rahman, very pro-Soviet leftist, was assassinated by his own Marxist-Leninist military comrades. It's the same pattern everywhere. The, the time bomb is ticking with every second. The disaster... Yeah, so I uh, hope you found that interesting. Um, mentioned a lot of things that I think will be relevant to uh, a lot of situations that uh, our society is in at the moment. It's uh, very scary to think that that's from 1984 and it's now 40 years later and uh, things are still the exact same way that he's describing uh, there. So yeah, I hope you found that uh, useful. I hope that... Um, Shines a bit of light on things for you, and uh, yeah. So, Yuri, please go watch all his videos. Very, very worth it. His lectures are amazing, and they go into a lot more detail. Uh, you can find them for multiple hours, or whatever length you want. You can find it's on there. Yeah, go check him out.